any of these microscopes can send their images to SparkView software digitally. So what's the difference between them? How do you use each of them? And how do you prepare microscope slides? And once you're looking at the digital images from a digital microscope on a screen, how do you figure out the magnification level? This is digital microscopes and slide preparation. I'll give you four seconds to look at a magnified image and guess what it is. Here's the image. If you guessed a mosquito antenna, you're right. But what if I asked you to compare the average length of an antenna hair found close to the head with the length of a hair found far from the head? Well, technically that's not hair because its chitin-based chemical structure is different than this keratin-based stuff found on mammals. Anyway, according to SparkView, this hair is about 0.7 millimeters long. SparkView doesn't just know how long things are. You have to do what's called the calibration to teach SparkView how long to make a millimeter or centimeter or inch when it measures something in an image. In this investigation, you'll learn how to use a microscope together with SparkView software to observe and measure tiny things you can't see in detail with the naked eye, and you'll also learn how to prepare microscope slides. Let's get started on this five-part investigation. Today we're going to view images from a digital microscope in SparkView. This is a single lens digital microscope because it has only one adjustable magnifying lens and no eyepiece. This is a compound digital microscope because it has an eyepiece with its own magnification plus three objective lenses with different levels of magnification. I can swap out the standard eyepiece for a digital camera eyepiece, so I lose an eyepiece, but I gain a digital video feed. Or you might be using a compound microscope like this, where the eyepiece remains in place, but between the eyepiece and objective lenses, a mirror reflects the magnified image into a digital camera feed, so I can either see a traditional microscope view through the eyepiece, or I can look at the digital video feed. But if I wanted to, I could see both images at the same time. And this piece is up here to mount a tablet if that's where I want to send the microscope feed instead of a laptop. No matter what kind of digital microscope you're using, the USB cable should be unplugged from your device before you start. And because some apps will grab the microscope as soon as it's plugged in, make sure there are absolutely no apps open on your device. Let's get started with part one. There's no actual data collection in part one. This part of the procedure is here for you to learn how to connect a digital microscope in SparkView and options for lighting. Speaking of lighting, let me turn on the microscope light. All other apps on my computer are closed, so now I can open SparkView. Make sure SparkView is full screen, if it isn't already, and choose sensor data. I see camera one, even though I have not plugged in my digital camera or microscope yet, that's because SparkView is seeing the built-in camera in this laptop. So while I'm looking at the screen, I can plug in the USB cable and now I can see a new camera join the list. Camera two is probably the microscope, and I said probably because it's possible for SparkView to change camera numbers. And later on, I'll show you what to do if that happens. So now I need to open the camera two menu and add a check mark to the image check box to get access to the video feed. Notice how once that box was checked, a camera option appeared in the templates menu. Now you can click the camera icon and SparkView will bring you to a new screen. The live camera feed should be available right away. And clearly this feed is not coming from the microscope. So click inside the image to stop the live video stream. Open the camera tools menu. Go to settings. And try a different camera. Then select preview to go to live stream mode. That's my microscope. All you need to do to collect a still image is click anywhere in the live image. And to start up the live feed again, open the camera tools menu and select the preview mode with this icon. You could also use the check mark down here when you're ready to collect a still image. This is a compound microscope, so it has a separate power supply, which I need to plug into a wall outlet if I want the light below the stage to work. But a single lens microscope like this may power the lights completely through its USB cable. 
This microscope only has lights that shine above the slide, and this microscope only has lights that shine from below a slide, and others have both. If you find at any time you need more light either above or below a slide, a flashlight attached to a ring stand makes for a nice adjustable light source. And in the case where there's no way to get light underneath the slide when it's on the stage, grab a clear two ounce souffle cup and set the slide over the mouth. Then you can aim the light either to reflect up through the bottom of the slide or point more directly above the slide. Another idea is to tape a piece of paper over the stage if you're struggling to distinguish specimen features from the background. Experiment with lighting as you work to discover what works best for your specimen. Another tip, you might have noticed a lot of the icons in the camera tools menu are grayed out and unavailable sometimes. The live feed has to be turned off and at least one snapshot has to be captured to make these icons available. And now we're ready for part two, where you'll learn how to prepare a dry mount slide. But before we move on, let's save our work. Your teacher may or may not ask you to save your work at SparkView, but it's never a bad idea to back up your work. Go to the main menu at the top left. I'll choose Save As. The default name is myexperiment.spklab. So let me select just the My Experiment part and leaving the file extension .spklab there. And I'll give it a short name. I'll navigate to where I want to save the file. And now I can close SparkView. I can open SparkView and choose the option on the bottom right, Open Saved Experiment, and navigate to My Save Work. Now we'll move on to part two. This part is all about the dry mount slide preparation technique. The dry mount technique is used to prepare specimens that lack moisture, such as dust particles, pollen, insect parts, flower petals, feathers, and hair. Today, our specimen is a single letter E from a newspaper. I found some E's where there was nothing printed on the back, and I just cut them out so only the letter E is there. You might find it easier to handle the E's with forceps, tweezers, or toothpicks, so I have some tools ready just in case I struggle. Grab a clean glass slide and cover slip by the edges and inspect it. If it's chipped or cracked, let your teacher know and discard in the broken glass container. Now, choose one E and set it in the center of the slide. Then pick up the cover slip by its edges. And center it over the letter. There. Now, my slide's ready. On the compound microscope, make sure the objective lens is set to the lowest power. This objective has a magnification power of 4x. Use the coarse focus knob to lower the stage as far down as it can go. Look for metal clips or a slide holder on the stage and use them to secure the slide so the letter E is in a normal reading position from your perspective, like this. If the clips are missing, you can use a piece of tape to secure the slide if you like. But if you're using a single lens microscope like this, move the lens and stage as far apart as possible. Orient the slide so the letter E is in a normal reading position from your perspective. But since the single lens microscope has a much lower magnification power than a compound microscope, it's less important to secure the slide so you don't need to tape or secure it, not necessarily. Right now is a good time to pause the video and review questions one and two on your answer document so you know what to look for while I'm working with the slide. Press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, line up the E directly under the objective lens. My microscope has a mechanical stage, so instead of moving the slide by hand, I can just turn these knobs to move the slide around. Okay. All right, I'm starting to see something there. Use the large coarse focus knob to raise the stage until you start to see the E come into view. 
Slowly adjust the course focus knob until the letter E is in view. And as you go, move the slide to keep the E centered. And when it looks like that E is almost in focus, switch from the coarse focus knob to the fine focus knob to make smaller focus adjustments. Okay, adjust the diaphragm and the light source intensity to get the clearest image. Now, uh, I know this paper has ink on the top of the paper. So in this case, it might be best to illuminate my slide from above instead of from below. But here in the studio, I have a lot of light from above, so uh, I don't need to use the flashlight this time. Now I'm going to move the slide around to give you an idea of how direction works on a compound microscope. And I wanna remind you right now, I'm looking at the letter E here on the slide in a normal reading orientation. So consider that as I move the slide to the left and to the right. So now I'm moving the slide to the left. And now I'm moving it to the right. Take note of what direction this looks like in SparkView. And um, don't be confused about direction because you're watching a video. So let me repeat. I'm going to move the slide directly to the left, to my left. And now I'm moving it to my right. Okay, check out the result in SparkView. What you're seeing in SparkView is similar to what you'd see if you were looking through the eyepiece, so it's, it's not exactly the same. Let me show you what you'd be seeing if you were looking through the eyepiece here. Okay, so that's a picture of what you'd see if you were looking through here. Notice it's a little bit different. Now compare it to what you see in SparkView. Okay, now I can take a snapshot in SparkView so you can use it to fill out the first row in table two on your answer sheet. There are a few different ways to get a SparkView image into editable answer sheets, but it really depends on the kind of device you're using. All devices have a screenshot option and this is a Windows computer. So if I press and hold the Windows logo key and shift and S, I get to select a screenshot area. All right, and now that screenshot goes directly to my clipboard so I can paste that image directly into my editable answer sheet. Go online to research how to take a screenshot on your device and how to paste it into a document. Ask your teacher whether it's okay to use screenshots in your answers or do you have to draw by hand, or is both okay? Right now is a good time to open the, the sample SparkView file so you can work in table two at your own pace. Don't forget to write your observations in the notes column. Answer questions one and two in the section after table two. Pause the video here and play the video when you're ready to move on. I'm curious to see what happens when I change to the next higher objective lens. This will be 10X. So, let me start SparkView again. Now I've got a live feed. Here we go. I'm at now at the 10x objective. So I have to adjust focus and light again for image clarity. Wow, look at that. Looks like I can't see the entire letter E in this view, but it's interesting to see the close-up image. I'm gonna go to several levels of fine focus here, give you an idea of what it looks like up close. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the 4X objective lens, get back to where I started. And I'm going to make the necessary focus adjustments. And now we're ready for part three. In this part, you'll learn how to rename images and make measurements of your specimens in SparkView. Notice up here in the top right, the legend says one image, but you can change it to something more descriptive. Go to the experiment tools, that's the icon where the screwdriver and wrench make an X. Now go to manage images. You could delete images here if you want, but let's choose rename image. 
Make sure the image you want to rename is selected with the blue box around it, then click OK. Click in the box and edit the image name. Then click OK. Done, done. The number one stays there to keep track of image collection order if you take more than one snapshot, but the image name is updated. Before I go on, I have to get the live microscope feed back. So in the camera tools menu, I'll select preview. And now my feed is live again. Moving on, we're going to calibrate the digital measurement tool in SparkView so it can measure length. But I need a reference length in the snapshot, so I have a known distance to point to. I'm just going to add this chunk of a clear ruler with the metric side tucked in super close to that letter E. So um, now let me move the slide so I can still see the whole letter, but I want to make room for this ruler piece. Eh, that's good. Okay, so looking at SparkView, I see there's extra space on this side of the letter, so that's where I'll aim the ruler on the slide. On the metric side. Okay, so you can see it's barely there in the image. Uh, I just need to scoot the ruler away. I don't want to overlap that letter E. I need to make sure I can see the lines on the ruler. Be patient with this part. You may need to reposition or refocus. Okay, a toothpick comes in handy here to nudge the ruler chunk. Move it where you want. And that's Kind of okay, I can do better than that. Now I've got two lines, but I'm overlapping, so, oops. Almost got it. Okay, I have a little overlap, but I can work with this. So here I can see two distinct ruler lines that are right next to each other, or enough parts of them are visible to calibrate with, so I'm good to take my snapshot here. I'll rename this image Calibration. Or Calibratio, because it ran out of space. And I'll save my work. So you maybe were able to get away with answering some of the questions on your answer sheet without having to open the SparkView sample file yet. Um, but from here on out, you have to open that sample data file and work in SparkView to get answers. But don't worry, I'll show you how to use SparkView, but I, I won't just give you the answers. So now is a good time to pause the video and install SparkView on your device if you haven't done that already. Anyway, now we can use the millimeter distance in the still image to teach SparkView how to measure in millimeters. In the camera tools menu, activate the measurements tool. Now there's a new menu over here on the left. Choose the ruler icon and click near one of the millimeter marks. Let me collapse this menu to get it out of the way there. Now this box looks like it has an X in it, but those are really two arrows pointing at each other. If I click and hold anywhere but that X, I'm going to get nowhere except frustrated. So let me reposition the image. Aim for the X, click, hold, and drag until the two arrows become distinct. Now move the top arrow point to the exact top of the first millimeter marking. All right. And move the bottom arrow point to the exact top of the next millimeter marking. You also have to pick the same place on neighboring markings for this to work. So if you instead point to the bottom of the first millimeter marking, that's fine, but you also have to point to the bottom on the next millimeter marking. Your arrow also has to be perfectly straight in line with the ruler, so use the ruler edge as a reference. So what we've done with the arrow is to mark the known length of one millimeters but looking at the data on my screen here, it says uh, SparkView sees only pixels right now. We need to change this value of 277.00 px pixels to one millimeter. But before we do that, we have to figure out the precision on the ruler. Okay, so each of these lines, each of the lines here is one millimeter. 
That means I can estimate one more place. So I can read the ruler really to the tenth millimeter or to the tenths place, such as 1.0 millimeter. So now click anywhere inside either box to open the image measurement properties menu. The known length is one millimeter. So I'm going to change this number to one. Set digits to one because this will add one decimal place to all the measurements since we can report to the 10th millimeter with that ruler. Go down to the units box and replace pixels with millimeters and then click OK. Now notice the arrow says 1.0 millimeters. And if we move the arrows around, it will measure whatever we want in millimeters. You can add as many measurement lines as you want on the same image, and you can erase them. But if you go to the legend and try to make measurements on image one, you'll have to do a new calibration. Each image needs its own calibration because SparkView does not assume you're always using the same magnification on your microscope for every image snapshot you record. Anytime you want to do measurements on an image, you need to include a measurement tool of some kind in the microscope view. Now on your own in the sample SparkView data file, you need to measure the long part of the letter E from here all the way to here. In the second row of table two, sketch what you see in SparkView showing the measurement tool position on the letter E and record the length in millimeters in the notes column. Pause the video and press play when you're ready for part four. In this part of the procedure, you'll learn how to get the true magnification as seen on the SparkView screen. Total magnification on a compound microscope usually isn't the same as digital screen magnification. So you need to do this part whether you're using a single lens or compound digital microscope. Since you've already done a calibration in SparkView, you can easily figure out screen magnification. So on your calibration image, add a measurement straight across from one end of the image to the other. With the arrow points lined up with the exact place where the microscope feed meets the white space in SparkView, like this. In SparkView, the arrow has to be perfectly horizontal, so it might be easier to draw your arrow across the bottom or the top to help judge straightness. Mine looks a little crooked. It's a little better. You want to get right to the edge of the white space. SparkView says the microscope view area is 2.3 millimeters across. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to move SparkView to this screen so you can more easily see the next part. And I'm also going to change the SparkView window size so you can't copy my answer. You will get a unique answer on your own. So according to SparkView, the image area, it still says 2.3 millimeters wide because that's really how long it is across the small part of the slide we're looking at. But the screen image is definitely magnified because that arrow is this long on the screen. So now you have to get a ruler and measure the physical distance of the arrow on the screen. Hmm. So that's 16. Oh, actually, it looks like it's right there on the line for 17. 17.0 17 centimeters exactly on my screen. So in centimeters, I can estimate one more place. But I'm working in millimeters, so I've got to multiply my centimeters by 10 to get this in millimeters. So to get magnification, I just have to divide this physical arrow length uh, measured by the ruler by the SparkView digital arrow length. So for me, 
that's 170.0 millimeters divided by 2.3 millimeters. Cancel my millimeters. So I get 73.91, or I'm going to round that magnification power to a whole number to get 74. The units, we're just going to use X for magnification. So always round your answer to a whole number. I've got 74 X magnification power, 74 times enlarged. Now you need to get the answer on your own in SparkView with the window at full screen on your device. Your answer should be different from mine. It shouldn't be 74X, something different. So you're gonna go into the camera tools menu after you're done getting your magnification. Go and explore some different tools in SparkView that we haven't looked at yet. Open up that menu, look at these. Okay, pause the video, grab a ruler, report your screen-based ruler measurement in row three of table two. Calculate your screen magnification power and answer questions three, four, and five. Continue playing the video when you're ready for part five. At last, you've reached the final part of the procedure where you learn how to prepare a wet mount slide. The wet mount technique is used to prepare moist specimens such as pond water, saliva, worm eggs, and tissue samples. This technique makes it easier to see moist specimens because it flattens the sample and lets more light through. A dye or stain may be used to make individual structures easier to see, though we won't need any dye today. When you do use a dye, wear well-fitting gloves and a lab coat if available. Remove the slide from the stage and set it on a paper towel. Remove the cover slip and set it next to the slide. Reposition the letter E if it flips over or moves. Aim a water dropper about one half inch above the letter. Let one drop of water fall onto the letter. Mine flipped over, so I'm going to use a toothpick to reposition it. So this is something important to put in your observation of what happened. I might need help with forceps too. There we go. Now, grab the cover slip. Set the cover slip. Set the edge near the drop like this. And when you reach a distance, between one fourth and one half inch uh, above the drop, let go of the cover slip. So it gently falls on the drop. Let the water spread out on its own under the cover slip. Avoid the temptation to push down on that cover slip. That's a bad habit that will crush and distort a specimen that isn't a flat piece of paper. If you've used the right amount of liquid, it will cover the entire area between the slide with little or no extra water escaping from under the cover slip, but it looks like there's a dry spot over here on this side. So normally we would need a redo and instead use two drops of water, but the procedure calls for just one drop of water at this point, so we'll just continue with what we have. Another thing that can go wrong is getting a lot of air bubbles stuck under the cover slip. Lowering the cover slip too quickly can cause that. You want to avoid air bubbles because they make the magnified image hard to see. I'm going to use my microscope skills to get the best image possible and take a snapshot. There we go. Now add or sketch the snapshot to table two and record observations in the notes column. We're not done, but I will give you cleanup tips before starting the final activity. Whether you're using a compound or single lens microscope, when it's time to clean up, remove your slide from the stage, set magnification to the lowest power, 
move the stage and lens as close together as possible, power off and unplug the microscope and store it according to your teacher's instructions. Follow your teacher's directions regarding how to clean or dispose of used slides and cover slips. And now for the final activity. Set a clean slide and cover slip on a paper towel. Prepare a new wet mount with a second letter E. Like before, except this time we're gonna add four drops of water to observe what happens when you add too much liquid. So if you see extra water flow out from under the cover slip, you're going to use a paper towel to absorb the excess water. Let's see. Definitely have some extra on the side. Avoid touching the cover slip and let the paper towel draw the liquid away from the slide. Do that without touching the cover slip. There. Now, here's the slide with four drops of water. I'm gonna switch my slide in the microscope. Start the preview. I'm gonna make some light adjustments here and see if I can get a better image. Okay. Now add your sketch or snapshot and record your observations in table two. Then answer the rest of the questions to complete the answer sheet. Congratulations, you've now got the skills to tackle future digital microscope challenges. Good luck.